Good memories right there for our next guest. Who knows what it takes to win in the postseason and how to do it with LeBron James. We welcome two-time NBA champ Mike Miller to the desk, friend of the show. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Love having you. All right, well, we're going to talk about your former teammate, LeBron. He obviously has three rings, inching closer to a fourth, and uh, the GOAT, Michael Jordan, of course, has six. What can LeBron do to pass MJ, Mike? I think you just answered it. You get to get closer to that six. Get two more. Get, get closer to that six. Okay. And, and, and for me, you know, the one thing about LeBron is when he's done, when he's, it's hard to compare now because as we see right now, he's not even close to being over. Mm -hmm. He continues to get better. But when he's done, I think he's going to be top five in every major statistical category that the NBA offers. So if he gets closer to that six, mm -hmm. it's going to be really, really hard not to, not to open the door when he knocks. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only thing you can really say right now is the winning. Uh, is the door closed until he gets those two more, though? No, absolutely not. I, I think it's so hard to have this conversation now. I mean, it's all hypothetical. But if he stays healthy and continues to do the things he's doing now at 32, mm -hmm. you think you start slowing down, he's speeding up. And so for me, if he, if, if he doesn't win two more, um, it's not closed. It's going to be more of a conversation, though. Mm -hmm. Stephen A. Question for you, Mike. So are you saying that if he does win two more, it's not a conversation that he is better than Jordan? I, it's always going to be a conversation. It's Michael Jordan. I mean, we, we grew up watching uh, MJ, you know, obviously my idol, one of my idols. Uh, so it's always a conversation when it comes to Jordan and the best player, if he gets the two more. Now, with that being said, you, you're going to have less arguments coming back that why LeBron is not the best player ever if he gets two more. Here's my thing, and I wanted to throw this by you because I want to make sure we're fair to your, your, your former teammate, obviously considered the, the greatest player in the world today, which he is. You know, if LeBron <coughs> were to lose this finals, he would be 8-1 and one in conference finals, but 3-5 and five in the NBA finals. When I think about Jordan, 6-2 and two in conference finals, 6-0 and oh in the NBA finals. When I think about Kobe... 7-0 and in conference finals, 5-2 and in NBA finals. Those are the kind of numbers that jump out at me. How should we view LeBron through that prism I just highlighted for you? Uh, obviously, that, that, you know, that, that part makes it difficult on the argument. The argument I would say back in return is that he's going now to be in a seventh straight. By the time he's done, he's going to probably play in 12, 13 finals. Now, if you play in that many finals, you're going to eventually lose. Uh, you know, you're not going to win 12 straight unless you're, you know, <laughs> Bill Russell or, or people like Michael that. Michael Jordan. Oh, or, well, or Michael Jordan. He got six. So, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's always going to be the argument. His, that's the argument. Like, I can't sit here and deny that. The argument's always going to be that. When he gets to the finals, he didn't, he, you know, his record hasn't been the best. But at the end of the well, day, he has three finals championships, and he's, gonna, he's right. fighting for more. We're arguing Michael, at 32. Mike, Mike, let me ask you this other question, because the only thing for me that I get critical about is the Eastern Conference. It's yep. like, you know, if, 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 if you I think any team that LeBron is on obviously is exponentially better. I mean, if you put him on the San Antonio Spurs, they wouldn't lose. If you put him on the Warriors, they wouldn't lose. If you put him on the Clippers, as far as I'm concerned, they wouldn't lose. He's that great. But the fact that he's in the Eastern Conference in a lot of people's eyes has a lot to do with why he's been to so many finals because they don't believe with the competition that exists in the West that it would have happened with that degree of regularity. What do you say to that? Obviously, again, a good argument. You're going to have good arguments come across the board. The problem I would say with that is the Eastern Conference now, yes, I can understand. When we were in Miami going to the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics were, were big time. The Chicago Bulls were the number one team, number one seed in the East for a while. Uh, Indiana was, was tough. You know, it was, it's a different brand and style of basketball. I get that. Um, you know, I, I, I truly believe one of the things you said there is the same thing I believe. Any team you put him on, for the most part, he's making the NBA Finals. So it's a matter of now getting it there and, and, and making the plays necessary in a seven-game series when it comes down to the NBA Finals. Mike, the only thing about that is when any year he lost the Finals, it's clear he wouldn't have gotten out of the Western Conference because he lost to the Western Conference team that represented the West in the Finals. So those are all years he wouldn't have made the Finals, and he only made them because he was in the East. Jordan, on the other hand, never played with an All-Star, the first time he did, so, so the argument, well, at least he's making the finals. You know, Jordan's getting eliminated ahead of time. First time Jordan played with an all-star was Scottie Pippen's first year. They took the Pistons game seven. Pippen couldn't play in game seven because he was My sick. Brain. Next year, Pippen hit his prime. 
and Jordan never didn't win the finals again in under seven games. Jordan's a tough argument for peak, but maybe for career, as you mentioned, since he's 32 years old, if he keeps going, maybe you can make the argument for an overall career one day. It's LeBron. How much farther do you think he can go at or around this level, Mike? That, I mean, obviously, that's, that's the million-dollar question. For him at 32 years old right now, to do what he's doing, it seems like he is, he's, he's, he's running downhill instead of uphill which is, to me, the most amazing thing, right? So to have this argument at 32 is tough. And then it becomes a, a, a question of, do you, put, do you put the legacy or the comparisons on just winning or overall numbers? Because when the overall numbers are said and done, if he continues at this pace for the next three to four years, he, I, in, my, in, my, in my views, will be top five in every major statistical category. So it's- Mike, it's, let me come- Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry, let me come back at you with this question because I think it's very important to ask you this question. A lot of people compare what Kevin Durant did and they said LeBron James set the stage when he decided to go to Miami. He's to blame for such a move on the part of Kevin Durant or whatever. I definitely come to LeBron James' defense in that regard because as far as I'm concerned, the argument that I'm making is that Kevin Durant went to a well-oiled machine that already had established the nucleus of his franchise, had already won a championship, been to two consecutive NBA finals, and pretty much they were intact, whereas LeBron with D. Wade, with Bosh, all of that was assembled, yourself included, being there. Could you paint a picture for us of what it was like when all of y'all descended upon Miami and how that is similar or different to what Kevin Durant did going to Golden State. Well, it's, it's obviously different. When we went to when we went to Miami, there was so much more uncertainty. You know, we had to fit we had to fit multiple like you said, we had to fit multiple pieces together. Didn't know how they'd fit. Didn't know if they'd fit or how it'd work. When 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 KD went to uh, Golden State this summer, it was one piece really, really, really MVP piece going and fitting with a bunch of other guys. It wasn't the same as when we went to Miami. When we went to Miami, D. Wade and, and Udonis Haslam were really, and Mario Chalmers were really the only foundational pieces in Miami that we kept. Joel Anthony, and, and that's about it. So now you take, you take a bunch of new pieces. Anytime you take new pieces, there's such, a, there's such more of a learning curve and a ramp up period. It's, it's a totally exactly. different, it's a totally different thing than one piece coming in. When you have the multiple pieces, it's always going to be more of a learning curve and uncertainty. Mike, on the other hand, LeBron James has a gravitational effect on teams. In other words, guys like you who might get more money somewhere else, look at LeBron, especially if he's crewed up, and suddenly, hey, we need a complimentary piece or a piece off the bench or a shooter, and instead of jet getting just anyone, they get Mike Miller. Then they get Ray Allen. They get pieces that they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. Can you take us through quickly what you were thinking when you saw LeBron in Miami? Just that. Uh, going into my free agency, I, I, I was, you know, when you play as long as, you know, I've been fortunate enough now to play 17 seasons. When I was at that time, it was like nine or 10, right? I had only been to the, uh, I've been to the playoffs almost every year, never been past the first round. Your whole life, when you, when you grow up playing basketball or doing anything for that matter, you want to see what the peak is like, what, how you perform. So when I went to that free agency, I was looking for a winning team. You know, I had offers other places to take more money, actually significantly way more money. But for me, is I wanted to see uh, in where I would perform, how I would do in the biggest moments. And that's why going to play with guys like LeBron or going and playing Golden State intrigues guys in our situation. You know, it's just not the, the top tier guys like KD. And for us, we want to do the same thing. You know, our situation, and that's what makes LeBron special. That's what makes LeBron, uh, you know, everyone wants to play with him because you have that chance to be on that stage. You have that chance to play 41 games on national television a year. You have the chance to be in the NBA Finals every year. Those things are intriguing. It's like, it's like selling a person to go to uh, New York or South Dakota, right? You're going to pick your choices. It's, uh, it's just one of those things. Mike Miller, what we're seeing from LeBron right now, as far as I'm concerned, is surreal. He's the best player in the world, but he seems to be head and shoulders above everybody mentally as well. And the level of focus is, is real flagrant. It's real glaring. Is that simply maturation, him being about championships, or is it about him looking at the Golden State Warriors as we speak? sitting around as a reigning defending NBA champion, but watching so many folks speculate about the greatness of the Golden State Warriors and how everyone else is fodder for them. 
What is going on in the head of LeBron James right now as we see him marching towards these NBA Finals? Is it about him and legacy and him just trying to win another chip? Or is it about the fact that y'all must have forgot who the hell are the Warriors? You got to deal with me. What person are we talking about here? Well, I think it, I don't, I don't even think it started now. I think it started at the beginning of the year. I think he understood what was happening when KD decided to go to Golden State. He saw this writing on the wall. For him, it, it, that's what makes him different right now than it was when I was in Miami. He went to Miami and learned. I, I tell people all the time there's a big difference between wisdom and knowledge, right? Knowledge is, is, is cool, but wisdom is applying that knowledge. He took that knowledge now and he's, he's applying that in Cleveland. He understands for his legacy, he's got to win. We're having this argument right now. If he wins two more championships, where is he? So he understands that. He's, he's an intelligent person, an intelligent basketball player. But his mindset right now is, hey, listen, we, we have an opportunity now to go into to play against Golden State in the finals if, if things work like we all think they're going to. And where is, where is he going to be when it's all said and done? Everyone's writing him off, like you said. I think that burns him a little bit. His mindset is ready. I think the team's ready. They've been here before, and it's nothing new for him. Mike, we appreciate your wisdom oh, and man. insight. Thank you so much for being with us, and come back Thanks soon. Thanks a lot, bro. It's good to see you, Thanks, man. guys. Good to see you, Mike. Yep. When we come back, Mark Cuban is certainly no stranger to controversial comments, but find